Did you see GCN has been getting a bit of flack? Yeah, I did. They posted a video called, Why Does a Road Bike Cost As Much As A Motorbike? They looked at the reasons the bike industry gives for push bikes costing thousands of pounds. Their arguments included that motorbikes have less R&D, although this was disputed by viewers. They also said that there is an inflated cost of having to stock lots of different components and sizes, and they argued that the profit margins on bikes are 40% versus motorbikes at around 10% because bike shops have to do more, like build up the bikes. Uh, I don't completely agree with that. Um, yes, if you do a custom build, it takes a lot more time and effort, and there's a lot more involved, but generally speaking, if we talk as a cycling industry, your bike comes boxed, you take it out, it gets set up, and then you need a safety check. So you need somebody who knows who to do, how to do it, but it's not more work than a motorbike um, or a car even. Um, also dispute the whole R&D thing because motorbikes have a lot of R&D. They do have a bit more trickle down, so which is an issue now, but it was an issue back in the day. So GCN definitely wasn't solely defending the price of bikes. They did acknowledge that prices are crazy right now, but it seems like trying to justify costs at all annoyed a lot of their viewers. One of the most liked comments said, GCN, don't try to help the bike industry in justifying their high costs. Consumers are being ripped off and anyone with critical thinking skills can see this. Another said, the main reason for £15,000 bikes is to make £5,000 bikes look reasonable. And a third said, lots of people don't understand that things don't sell for what they cost to make. Things sell for what people are prepared to pay for them. So... Is the criticism of their video fair? Yes. Uh, I do think, in general, it's overpriced. Uh, I, I still believe there are bikes that should cost £20,000, but that's the same as where there's cars that should cost, well, it costs £4 million um, if there are people who can afford it. Once. But in general, an average, the average on a bell curve, bikes in the middle for 50% for of all of them should be more reasonable, um, should be more durable. Uh, my main concern, I think, why I think this is happening is uh, disc brakes. The industry after COVID switched a lot more heavy towards disc brakes and it's a newer technology in the road bike market. I'm not talking mountain bikes, but it's been going for years and it just means there's not been a lot of trickle down where with rim brakes, group sets, if you took a eight speed or nine speed group set, that technology has been trickling down for 20 years. That's just not happened yet. So eventually it will get cheaper, but... We're, but yeah. but disc brakes is not expensive technology. It's not disc brakes, but it's the, like the way... Wh the why are we getting 12-speed and 13-speed group sets? We don't need them. They're spending millions and millions of pounds on R&D on group set technology that is just not needed. I agree with what you said to some extent, but then disagree in terms of 12-speed, 13-speed. There's no problem with it. R&D shouldn't stop and new things, trying new things shouldn't stop happening. The problem is that with these new 12-speed group sets, they're generally wireless they generally disc brake, meaning that they don't, haven't had a chance to trickle down because there's no 8-speed or 9-speed or 10-speed group sets that are really wireless, electronic, and disc brake. So at the moment, it's just massively inflated it and the manufact manufacturers have stopped producing the older stuff. So since COVID, you're struggling to find rim brake components for bikes. You can't just get what you want. And because of this, it's not trickling down. So it's not just, I mean, they should still make all the other stuff as well. I don't understand why 12, why they keep trying to add more gears on a rear cassette. It, it just seems pointless to me. And it's, it's additional cost for just no reason. It feels like they are engineering products so that they can sell new stuff. And I think that is what a lot of people are upset That's, about. Yes. Uh, well, that, that's true. They, they are making stuff to just justify charging more money. And, that, and more do up. not get me started on aero yeah. because the amount of money that is spent on aero and the development of aero, which then increases the cost of bikes because of all the, the R&D that's put into it, that, you know, Francis and I posted a video the other day where we literally went to Silverstone Aero Tunnel and compared Scott's Addict RC versus Scott's equivalent level foil bike everything else identical on it. And the difference between them was like a couple of watts. But I, I've, been pointless. Say, I've been saying this for, for years now that aero, I, I get the arguments always going to be an aero bike can be faster. Yes, but the gains are so small for the average person. We need to forget about what world tour riders are doing because none of us are world tour riders. So R&D needs to be spent a little bit more as well to the, for the average person. Stop doing 
what's working well for Tour de France only and start thinking of what's going to work for average people. Like what's the, work out what 95% of the cycling community needs and spend a bit more on that, make the bikes more comfortable. Um, your bike will go faster by being more comfortable, way more than it will be by being aero when you are not an elite level athlete. In their video, they talk about the profit margin on the bike industry being around 40% and on motorbikes being about 10%. Do you think, is that appropriate? You, you work no, in the bike uh, industry? I, I don't know of a single bike brand that's 40% margin. Uh, we just don't get it um, as a shop. So I don't know where they work that margin from. Um, yes, the cycling industry will have a bigger margin, but then is that a gross, from a uh, manufacturer side, I think the biggest thing would be gross profit versus net profit because I think they make the bikes for incredibly cheap um, so there could be massive profit margins but then they spend a lot of money on advertising and marketing and I don't think that's a good thing necessarily obviously I understand it's to get ahead and sell more of your bikes but customers need to know for some of these big brands like Specialized, Trek, um, all of them they are paying a lot of that money they're paying for that bike is going towards the marketing. It, it, yeah it does seem the marketing budget's in Cycling is, is like disproportionate to the size of the industry. Yeah. Like how much does it cost to sponsor a pro team for a bike brand? Billions and millions. Two million, five million, ten million, depending on what it is. And yes, they might sell bikes off the back of it, but that is a hell of a lot of money just, just from an off, just yeah. from that perspective. Um, so yeah, there's definitely a lot of mark, a hell of a lot of marketing costs, which goes into the bike industry. I'm sure there is in motorbikes as well, but you know, if you're, if you're into bike, motorbikes, you're into motorbikes. I've wanted a motorbike my entire life. I haven't ended up getting one. If I did do my license because there's barriers to getting into it, the first thing I would do is go and buy a Harley Davidson Iron 883. And as, as Harley people hate it, but it is a beautiful bike. And that, that's what I would do. I would just go and buy it. Done. People will say motorbike industry also spends a lot of money on marketing, but they do it through racing. But the difference they do, I think, to cycling industry is that Let's use Ineos as an example. Ineos has a team um, and they'll have sponsors and Pinarello will pay Ineos to ride their bikes and give them bikes, which is how they pay the marketing. Where in a superbike team, the superbike company, somebody like Honda, will actually own most of the team. They will get sponsors paying them to be in there as well. So there's R&D, there's a lot of money goes into it, but it's, yeah, I think the viewers on their video, on GCN's video is right. It is, it is overly inflated at the moment. Um, you can't justify the prices. Uh, you can justify on a custom hand-built something like a sturdy or a bike where somebody's made a craftsman, like a artisan has designed a bike and made it for you. But in the average bikes, the bikes that everybody's buying, the, the mainstream brands uh, where they are charging that amount of money on a bike is just silly. You get companies like Time where they are manufacturing frame sets that takes them 44 hours to make a single frame set and a lot of work goes into that frame set retails for £3,200, where the rest of the industry, standardized bikes made by, there'll be a handful of factories in China making all the big brands' bikes, and then they charge £5,500 for that frame set. And you think, how, how is that justified? 44 hours for £3,500 seems like a very healthy hourly rate. Well, it's not, <laughs> obviously that wouldn't be the final, th you could, the, 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 the contrast would be, I reckon some of the frame sets that are made by other external factories, there's been rumors going around where some of the big brands where the frame sets retail for five and a half thousand pounds only cost about $400 is what they're paying the factory to make the bike. Yeah. I've, I've heard a lot of those kind of rumors. So it's, it's, it's a bit of, it's marketing. Marketing is a problem. I don't know the answer to this, but I would assume that the actual raw cost of manufacturing a motorbike and a motorbike engine and all of the metal associated to it, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, and bearings that are suitable for those speeds, blah, 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 blah. The actual cost of manufacturing that bike to be significantly higher than the actual cost to manufacture a bicycle. Yes. And I think that is one of the things that people have issues with. I can buy a 15,000 pound motorbike. Well, I can actually buy a much cheaper motorbike. That, For example, that Harley Davidson I want, last time I looked, which was a number of years ago, you could buy it brand new for, I think, about seven and a half, eight grand. And that is like the coolest bike in the world, in my opinion. Um, whereas the actual manufacturing cost of that bike was probably a couple of grand, realistically. The only to play devil's advocate over here is that bike would have been technology that's probably about 20 or 30 years old. 
So yeah, they've been fine. using it over trickle down. That's what I mean, the trickle down does come down. Wave. I've, I've got bicycles that have technology that's 20 or 30 years old, and they're fantastic. They are Harley Davidsons that cost probably about 40,000 pounds. You mean a high end motorbike now, you are looking closer to 40,000 than you are to the 10, 50. Yeah, that's if you want yeah. the Gucci handbag. But we're talking about Gucci bikes as well. Yeah. Uh, I, but I, I still honestly believe that now a good, decent, good quality bike that will last in the northeast of England where the weather is terrible, you're going to have to spend about two and a half thousand pounds. And that is outrageous. That should be much closer to a thousand pounds or less. The problem is ultimately that there needs to be more choices in affordable, reliable bikes, isn't it? It's not necessarily, you'll look at any industry and you will get stuff that's at the high end, the mid to high end, that's capitalism. But almost, I think it almost doesn't matter what GCN was saying in this video and how balanced they were trying to be. The general mood of people seems so angry at the cost of stuff. Mm -hmm. And it's because there are so many options at the higher price point and the lower end and that's what's getting marketed. That's what we're seeing on teams. It's what we're seeing on websites. That's the the thing that you need to get in inverted commas. But the emphasis on affordable, reliable bikes just seems to have left the room, left the chat. Doesn't uh, exist. A brother steel frame set, which is a more affordable frame set, it retails for nine hundred ninety nine pounds for the nicest one they do. Um, I'm pretty sure the manufacturing cost of that frame set is exactly the same as what it costs to get a high end carbon frame set from the, they'll be buying them in from the far east as well uh but they spend considerably less money in marketing so it's the same cost but the one frame retails for a thousand one retails five and a half and that's where it becomes ridiculous mm. it feels like the industry is ready for a reset and i think it is about to happen what do you think is going to happen next in terms of pricing in the industry it's difficult to predict um a lot of shops a lot of online retailers uh, and big names are going under at the moment. And because of that, there's a lot of stuff being sold really cheap. But the big manufacturers aren't stopping their development. So they'll be producing new stuff. So there'll be a trickle down. But if yeah. ultimately, one of the commenters said, if people aren't paying, then prices will come yeah. down. It's whether, you know, if if there's lots of sales on, if the secondhand market gets really good, then brands will find that they're not selling what they need to sell. And I think prices will come down. The price are already massively come. Uh, Shimano 105, the new group says last year sold for 1780 and now all, all of a sudden you can probably pick it up for 1200 quid. Um, it, it'll all just come down again. Um, it's going to have to, the, the big reset is going to happen. I think we're going to see more non cycling specific brands that have big pots of money that are going to start entering the space, especially because wiggles come down. Mm -hmm. So Decathlon's an easy example of it. Um, they're lunging massively into the cycling space and I think they're going to make a huge dent in it. And from what I've seen thus far, I'm really happy with it. Uh, the other thing I reckon we're probably going to see is I think we're going to see more finance. The the classic, um, and it's popping up everywhere now, the classic car finance model. You get a bike on a three-year agreement, you pay 200 quid a month, and then after three years, you give it back to them and you get the next one. You never actually own the bike. They then sell it on. I reckon we'll probably see more of those see, kind of things. I really hope that doesn't happen. I think you're right, but I hope it doesn't because it's just wasteful. Just start making bikes last longer again. I mean, it's a whole thing. of They made stuff in the 50s and the 60s that last for ages and ages and ages. And now all of a sudden everything dies really quickly. And it's not because they make, it's, they're using cheaper materials to make stuff. Material science, make it out of better steel, out of better materials, stuff that's going to last longer, more sustainable. Um, carbon fiber was quite a bit of an issue. Aluminium wasn't great either. Go back to steel. Stop buying fast tires, buy more durable ones. Which so ones that last longer? Yeah, they'll still be fast if they last longer. It's not uh, that, that fast and slow thing is such a small <laughs> margin that the average person will never realize. Um, comfortable, get more comfortable. But it's, yeah, just make things last longer, more durable. 